Today we have My Lotus Amira and this Exige 390 Final Edition for comparison. Both cars feature similar drivetrains and both can be picked up for around the same amount on the open market. However, how do these cars truly compare? And which should you choose if you're looking for a track and road focused experience? Today's video is presented in partnership with Hampson Auctions, one of the UK's leading classic, performance and supercar auction houses. Their next sale takes place on the 24th of November at the magnificent Bowlesworth Castle in Cheshire. While we've got the cars located closely together like this, I'm going to perform a general specification comparison, which is talking about the general power to weight ratio, the general specification of the build, etc. Then we're going to take the cars out individually on the road and perform a driving comparison to see how they compare for driving dynamics. So first of all, moving to the Exige 390 Final Edition, the Exige 390 Final Edition replaced the Exige 350 Sport in the production run. And this was perceived to be the final edition of the Exige, although they did make a 420 and a 430, which respectively were 420, 430 brake horsepower. But those two models are more track focused rather than having a road bias. So they're sort of not really a good comparison against the Lotus and Mirror. The 390 is a good comparison, is a good middle ground between track and road focused. So this is a good comparison to make with the Amira. Now this particular Lotus, Lotus Exige, is colored in flat yellow and there's obviously certain black accents against the actual flat yellow coloring. It looks a very similar color to the Lotus Amira. The Lotus Amira is heffel yellow, but it looks a slightly different shade. It may be due to the, due to the aging of the car because this is a 2021 car, obviously this is a 2023 car. With regards to the drivetrain of these cars, my Lotus Amira features a 3.5 Toyota supercharged V6. And this Exige 390 Final Edition features also a Toyota 3.5 V6 supercharged engine. So they are very similar with their drivetrains. This Exige 390 pushes out 397 brake horsepower. And my Lotus Amira pushes out 400 brake horsepower. So slight edge there on the brake horsepower, but only by three brake horsepower. However, the Exige 390 has the killer feature. It only weighs 1,137 kilograms, whereas my Lotus Amira is bloaty in that in comparison by weighing 1,458 kilograms. So my Lotus Amira is around 300 kilograms heavier. So what that means is, that the Exige 390 has a power to weight ratio per ton of 349 brake horsepower per ton, whereas my Lotus Amira has a brake horsepower per ton of 272 brake horsepower. So substantially lower powered per ton on the Lotus Amira. So the Exige 390 definitely wins that feature. Moving around to compare engine compartments and storage space. The Lotus Amira features the, the Toyota 3.5 supercharged V6, 400 brake horsepower, 320 pound foot of torque, 0 to 62 in 4.2 seconds and a top speed of 187 miles per hour. With regards to luggage space, you've got a fair amount of luggage space here and it's a bit disconcerting because on instant viewpoint you think that it was limited to just this particular dimensions but you have got more space it goes deeper underneath so you have actually got more space to shove some soft bags down the sides and we do manage to fit quite a bit in with all our camera equipment and our bags when we're when we're actually traveling in this car as we have done up to Cheshire. Now moving across to the Exige 390 you can see exactly the same Toyota engine so it's a Toyota 3.5 V6, supercharged as well as you can see here because this, this compartment is fully open. You can see the supercharger belt. This is the supercharger takeoff straight from the crankshaft. 
This has a larger supercharger, which hence why it actually performs better with regards to 0-62 performance. This has 397 brake horsepower, even though the car is called a 390, it's actually 397 brake horsepower. It has 311 pound-foot of torque, so a lower torque figure, and a top speed of 172 miles per hour. As you can see from the luggage space, it is smaller than the Lotus Amira, but again with this car you have this feature where you go deeper to the side, into the side rear wing section, so you can actually fit a fair amount in there, but the access space is smaller, so you'd only be able to fit in an item around this dimension unless it's a soft bag and you squeezed it in sideways, so you could say they're comparable with regards to storage space, although the Amira really has the edge. If you look at the Exige 390, you can see the hinge system is very strong, very robust and very functional. And of course it's attached to this composite door, which is very light. And if you take a look further down, you can see how the courtesy light switch is integrated into the sill area. Again, very functional. But if we move to the Lotus Amira, you can see that the door, first of all, it's a lot heavier. It's a lot more sturdily built and the hinges are more standard configuration. They're what you'd expect with a, with a standard hinge mechanism. This is a first edition Lotus Amira and as such is highly specced. I chose this specification when I first ordered my Lotus, which I ended up cancelling due to the experiences with Lotus. But this is the same specification that I actually configured. It's black leather interior, yellow offset, offset stitching, which works very well with this black leather interior. Alcantara down the centre of the seats, yellow stitching offsetting against the, the um, black Alcantara and an Alcantara steering wheel. The only difference on the internal cabin that I had specified was I chose a leather steering wheel but now this has got an Alcantara steering wheel I actually do prefer it. I've never had an Alcantara steering wheel before so I was going safe by choosing leather but actually I do prefer the Alcantara steering wheel. With regards to specification, it's the first option, it's the first series car. So with it being a first series car, it's just heavily options. You've got climate control, you've got Apple CarPlay, um, air conditioning, all the mod cons. And also, of course, with the Lotus Mirror, you've got the open access, although it has got a grid around it to show you the gear linkage mechanism functioning, which is quite a cool feature. But with regards to the functionality, the i4 AMG has that open space a lot more because you don't obviously have that linkage because it's electronic with regards to its dual clutch transmission. And you have more space here, whereas you don't have so much space here. Although you do have a USB-B socket there takeoff, which is quite useful. Rear access space is fairly substantial in the back. So we tend to be able to put quite a bit behind the seats here. It's very good for fitting in some soft bags. So if you're going on a bit of a driving tour, obviously you can use the boot space, but the boot space gets quite warm on both cars because of that 3.5 V6 engine being quite close proximity to the luggage compartment. So you'll be putting quite a few of your perishable items or any food items, for example, you'd be putting them behind the seats so they don't get affected by the heat of the engine in the engine luggage compartments. So this Exige 390 was optioned with solid yellow paint, which again looks just like the Heffel yellow paint, only lacking a bit of its lustre. And that could only be because this is a 2021 car. Mine's a 2023 car, but it does look like the same Heffel yellow paint, just not called Heffel yellow. It's called flat yellow, so solid flat yellow paint. Moving to the interior of the car, this car has been optioned with Alcantara seal covers, Alcantara centre seats, and these are bucket race seats as well, so they're a lot more fitted to the individual and to the passenger and to the driver. You've got this beautiful yellow stitching offset around the seats and around the Alcantara. You've got the beautiful yellow Lotus emblem stitched into the headrest, which is really done very classically and very nice. You've got the yellow offset, offset stitching throughout the cabin, throughout the, the Alcantara and the dashboard sections, although all around the accents tend to be around the air conditioning modules to focus the, the output of the air. It's quite stark inside the Exige 390 though. You can tell it's more of a track focused car. It was optioned with carpets as well. So you do have full carpets down the side of the sill sections. This the passenger side and the driver side and the, the carpet mats as well. So that was an additional option as well. In addition, this has DAB stereo, which is an additional option, and it has air conditioning. It also has the black forged wheels, which we can show you on B-roll on, on additional footage. 
So this is quite a heavily optioned car and it also has the same similar Alcantara styled steering wheel, although the steering wheel on the Lotus Amira is definitely thicker. So it'll be interesting when we get this out on the road to see how that compares and to see how it compares for driving position compared to the Lotus Amira with these quite, they feel quite rigid, quite fixed and possibly not so comfortable bucket seats, but definitely more driver focused and more track focused with regards to its configuration. The seats don't tilt forward, so, and I can see anyway from the back that you haven't really got any space behind, behind the back of the seats, although you do have quite a good speaker configuration considering it's an Exige 390 final edition. So it's not an out and out track focused interior. It's sort of semi, a good mix between track focused and road focused, although I would say with a track bias, definitely. Um, with regards to its configuration. And of course, with regards to the, the manual gearbox, you've got a very more open, more aggressively styled gear lever mechanism. And that obviously shows more oriented towards being a track focused approach. You know, you're definitely gonna hear the click and clacking of the gear slotting into place there with that gear lever and mechanism. If you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. For more information, please contact me via a message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. So first of all, driving the Lotus Amira on our section of roads. We haven't driven on this section of roads with this car yet. So we've got to experience this first to perform a comparison. First of all, we're going to hit on internal ergonomics. It's very much more comfort focused, the Lotus Amira. The steering is quite fast. It's not quite as fast as a supercar, but not far off that at all. The seating position is very good with the electric seats and very comfortable. The, ride, the driving position is great. It's very, very good. You can get it pretty much to any driving position you want. The access to all the controls is, is great. And the functionality of these first edition cars is very good. You get pretty much everything. You've got DAB radio, DAB radio, you've got CarPlay, so Apple CarPlay for Waze and for music. You've got access to the climate controls from the centre console and you've got a very good climate, climate control system, apart from the fact that this has got a failing resistor on it, so you, the climate control is either on or off. Visibility is very good. The eight pillars are fairly thick, so that does cause a bit of a problem with regards to visibility but not too much it doesn't impair too much you've got good visibility with the quite wide and nicely styled door mirrors for the accent for visibility to the rear the rear view mirror has great visibility with the darkened glass though it does provide a bit of a reflection so that's not quite as good I would have preferred to have clear glass and not the not the not the darkened glass but you can't have it all when you buy a car second hand this is a bit of a bumpy section now that we're on. And we we'll slow right down here. So access to all the controls for the door mirrors is great. You've got the door mirror controls on the door cards and you can access the, the windows for, but you can access the windows on the door, on the driver's door card for both windows, uh, which is good because it's a bit of a wider reach across than it is on the 390. The stereo system is quite good. On, on the, the stereo system on the Amira is very good as well. Again, the first edition, you get all that extra functionality that you would normally have to pay for as an extra. The internal cabin is very plush with its configuration. The, the full leather dashboard at the top and you've got the Alcantara from part of the dashboard down. The Alcantara down the center of the seats and the full carpets and the Alcantara on the door cards and leather on the door cards as well. Very, very nicely specified. Lotus have done very, very well with the configuration, with the build, with the internal cabin build of the Lotus Amira. Very much leaps and bounds above 
the car that it replaced or the cars that it replaced because it pretty much replaces all the other sports cars in their range and this is the last proper Lotus sports car before they move across to electric stroke hybrid sports cars which is the you know who wants that when you're used to driving a Lotus when you're used to the Lotus brand but whether or not that does actually come forward or not is another thing but at the moment that's set in the cards so this is perceivably the last you know you could say naturally aspirated Lotus sports car even though it is force fed with a supercharger it's not blown with turbochargers but it's not a hybrid but it just grips. Fantastic road holding. So in short, the Lotus Amira is very much leaps and bounds above the cars that it replaces. It predominantly it replaces the Exige. And the Exige 390 being the final edition, it's quite quite pertinent that the Lotus Amira is classed as the as the first edition so this is a first edition and we've got a 390 final edition and this replaces the Exige so it's uh, very pertinent that we've got these two cars for a comparison of course with them being having a very similar drivetrain as well although albeit different performance figures now that's where this car is going to fall down really because this car has around 272 274 brake horsepower per ton it has around 320 pound foot of torque and 400 brake horsepower but that results in 274 brake horsepower per ton which is a lot lower than the 390 final edition and that i think is gonna is gonna really tell on this comparison on this driving comparison i think those figures are really going to tell a tale brakes are fantastic their steels um, very very good very direct a little bit bitey to begin with than they need to be initially but they're very direct and and to be honest they're better than the 458 but the 458 isn't really known for great great brakes and even though they're carbon ceramics the only annoying thing of course is moving from carbon ceramic brakes in the 458 to steels you get a lot more brake powder which dirties the wheels up but hey that's you know first world problems on the negative side with regards to the, the driving experience, the, for some reason the clutches tend to be a long throw on Lotuses and this has got a long throw clutch as well. And what that means is that I have to have the seat fairly far forward towards the steering wheel to be able to depress the clutch properly, which can be a little bit frustrating. But it is what it is, you know, I, I would have thought they'd have a shorter throw clutch on these cars, but, but they don't. I should say as well that I'm actually in sport mode on the car, so I've taken it out of touring and we're now in sport mode. The suspension is great, it's very well sprung, even in this bit of a bumpy section of these roads that we use. It's very nice and I'm not having the steering wheel trying to be grabbed out of my hand, so it's not trying to track. Which is, which is great, you don't want that for a car that you're going to be putting any sort of mileage in. You don't want it to be too twitchy. It's 
dropping out of revs and dropping out of pull when you're hitting the red line, it's still pulling very strong, as you can see there, you know, it's just under the red line. Just under the red line. So it's still pulling very strong. I do wonder if they can push this red line up higher on these cars. Spectacle getting into the 390. Straight away when we're both getting into the car, the driving ergonomics is very, very tight in here. We're both quite wide people because we both train a lot, not because we're fat. And the width in the car, I mean, I can reach right across and touch the other side of the car door without any problem. I can operate the other door windows from, from the switch by just leaning across. Yes, I've got quite long arms. My son can do the same thing. The, it's very, very tight in the cabin. It's, it's a lot less space in the cabin than there is in the Amira, for sure. You f and you feel a lot more snug. You've got these bucket seats, and these bucket seats really encapsulate you. First of all, I can feel with the bucket seats that my, my backside, or the edge of my hip, seems to be on the side rail of the seat, which, you know, I have to shift around a bit to try and get comfortable. But the actual back of the seat feels very comfortable. It's just the, 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 the bottom squab, the edge rails, it, it's digging into my hip a bit. But let's stop, and, and the footwell as well, it seems very, very tight on the footwell, the top part of the footwell. I've got quite big feet, around size 10 and a half, and it's very constrained at the top, so I'm gonna have to have my, my feet on the lower section of the pedals. And I'm wearing Pilates, so I'm wearing proper driving shoes, very thin, thin soled and thin width, as, as thin as possible on the width as I can for my feet. Um, shoes to, to able, to, to assist with driving, to make it easier to drive with a smaller footwell. So if I was wearing um, bigger training shoes, I'd have a real big, big problem. So first of all, with this car, turn it two stages, and then we press the immobilizer button, and then we press the start button, fire it up. There we go. You've got this linkage mechanism, first of all, which is very, very pleasing to the eye, very functional. And straight away, when I'm trying to take the handbrake off, because it's a manual handbrake, unlike the Lotus Amira, which is an electronic parking brake, you've got a manual, manual parking brake in the 390. I'm having to move to the side to be able to let the handbrake down because the it's so tight in the cabin, I, I, can't, I can't really fit properly in here. Although when I'm sat normally, it's actually all right. But it's when I try and move and, and action any controls, that's when it becomes a problem. But be very careful with this car as well, because it's got a, quite a low front splitter. The steering wheel is a lot smaller, which makes it more like a go-kart. You feel like you're in a go-kart in the 390. And the steering is very direct. I thought the Amira was quite direct, but the, the 390 is very, very direct. It's very fast as well. A little bit twitchy, I would say, straight away from the get-go. This bit is, there has some slight undulations in the road and you can, you can definitely feel it. The suspension is a lot stiffer as well than the, uh, the suspension is a lot stiffer as well than the Lotus Amira. Whoo, that performance. <laughs> you can feel that weight difference. The car feels so agile and light. <laughs> about friggin egg does it pull this has a 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds that's only 0.2 seconds slower than my 458 on full chat the brakes aren't so grabby as they are in the Amira which is a good thing from that respect but they don't feel as strong as the Amira so I don't think the discs are as big discs than as they are on the Amira and straight away you can feel all of all the road through the cabin it's very stiffly sprung and it's it's very bumpy here i'm having to hold on to the steering wheel so it doesn't get pulled to one side it's not aggressively trying to grab the steering wheel away from me but you can feel every bump in the road visibility is very good the a pillars are quite small they're smaller than they are in the mirror so you've got great visibility 
um, through the actual front and to the B pillars. But from the B pillars backwards, forget it. You've got this shuttered, shuttered grille section on the rear engine cover screen, and it pretty me pretty much means you can't see a lot. You can see through it. You can see some cars, but you can't really see a great amount. Of course, you've got the engine behind us as well, similar to the Lotus Amira, so you can hear the supercharger whine, but the, uh, this car standard has a titanium exhaust on it, which is very, very throaty and has a really good sound. It also has a valve controller on it, so we've operated the valve controller to open the valves. This car just wants to leap and just wants to go. So this is 349 brake horsepower per tonne when compared to 274 brake horsepower per tonne in a Lotus Amira. So the power to weight ratio on this 390 is a lot higher than the Amira. And you can feel every bit of that. It just wants to go. The Amira is no slouch, but this is by far more, more performant. It just goes. torque as well you've got 311 pound foot of torque which isn't a vast amount but when you're hauling only 1138 kilograms it makes a hell of a lot of difference the torque in the Amira is a bit more but it's hauling 1458 kilograms so it's hauling 300 and a bit plus more kilograms than this 390 and that really makes a difference but let's punch it up a bit here do a bit of a standing start and get an acceleration. That is supercar performance. That is modernish day supercar performance. Yeah, it's not going to accelerate a 488 or an F8, but holy hell, that is bloody quick. That is bloody quick. Ain't much getting away from this, I can tell you. And this will be awesome on a track. But there you have it. This, this car is a lot more track focused. It's a lot more track focused in its build quality and how the, just in how the internal cabin's put together. It's a lot more track focused. And this has been optioned quite highly as well from new with the Alcantara on the on the sills and the carpets with the carpet mats that wouldn't be standard. The carpets wouldn't be standard in this car, it'd be a lot more stripped out. So this is actually optioned quite quite heavily on the comfort side for a 390. But even so, it's still functionally very track focused, and you can tell that as soon as you get in the car. It's, it's very light, agile, but also quite twitchy as well when you compare it to the Lotus Amira. Listen to that! <laughs> this has a 7,000 RPM red line, so it's a little bit higher, it's about 250 higher than the, than the Amira. so the climate control etc is all very functional you've got these big knobs it's not got, got much finesse to it and the only storage really that you have in the cabin is this tray in the front this metal tray in the front you haven't really got much else you've got these sill sections which are quite wide as you can see from the nightmare I had getting into the car and it's just as bad getting out um, but at least you've got some nice door cards lever on the door cards and Alcantara on the side door cards as well even the controls on the steering wheel for the, for the windscreen wipers and the lights and the indicators, that's all very functional as well. It's not got much finesse to it. The air conditioning systems, the vents for the air conditioning are very functional as well. You have nice Alcantara around those, but again, that is quite functional. I think I'm getting it across that it's a very functional car. <laughs> Turning circle is very good as well. About the same as your mirror. the question that I posed at the beginning to answer the question that I raised at the beginning of the video which car should you choose for a track and road focused experience out of 
the 390 final edition and the Lotus Amira, well, if you're looking for a lot more track biased and you're not going to be driving the car long distances, then without a doubt, the 390 final edition or the 430 or, for, or the 420, they're going to be even more track focused. But if you're looking for an all-rounder, a car that you can take on the track, a car that you can drive in a very spirited manner, but it has all the comfort and all the ergonomics that you'd want for driving on fairly long distances, then it has to be the Lotus Amira. So if you're looking for an all-rounder, the Lotus Amira does it. And that's pretty much why Lotus designed the car how they did. It's just a fantastic all-rounder.